All right, welcome everybody. Today we are going to talk about the paradox of happiness. My name is Nick Redmark. I'm a coach engineer, which means I use the engineering mindset to analyze the personal development problem and develop tools or find tools that I present to you here on a daily basis. And today we are going to look at the book by Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, uh, who is a very well-known author within the context of positive psychology, which is the study of, well, the positive element of human experience. And his book is called Flow, and it's a classic, and I was ashamed to realize I haven't read it yet, and this is what I'm doing now. And so what I'm going to talk about today comes from that book. Here is the index, as you can see, it's, uh, we are going to learn about happiness, consciousness, and then how to create flow in, in life. But today's uh, video is about the first chapter, happiness revisited. And here we will learn about the paradoxes of happiness. The main feature of human existence is that we basically all want happiness, basically by definition. But the problem is there is a catch 22, which is you cannot seek happiness. As soon as you ask yourself, am I happy? Then you're not happy anymore. Let's go deeper into it. The first problem that we encounter in life is the problem of survival, which is a never ending problem. If you think about the universe and look at it in its totality, you quickly realize that it hasn't been designed with the comfort of human beings in mind. Whenever we solve survival problems, new and bigger survival problems arise and it's basically a never-ending struggle. But then it doesn't end there. Uh, the, the second problem is our rising expectations. There is this problem called the hedonic treadmill, which basically is the fact that whenever we achieve something, we cannot just be content with it. We have the illusion that that can happen, but uh, that's not what happens. Uh, I remember in my life thinking, okay, when I finish my studies, then that's it. Then I'm going to be happy and content. Now, th that's obviously not the way I feel about it. So, as a society, we live in much higher life standards than people used to live in 100 years ago. Are we much happier? Uh, that, that can be doubted. Another problem is the problem of socialization. Society needs from us certain behaviors so that it can keep on functioning. Um, and it doesn't necessarily want us to be happy. It has a variety of social controls. On one hand, it can threaten to punish us. On the other hand, it can promise pleasure or promise a, a future good life. And all these institutions of society, like politicians, but also advertisers uh, and family, friends, everyone we encounter in society uses basically our biological and psychological motivations to make us act in certain ways. And society doesn't necessarily have our happiness in mind when it does that. Now, there are certain experiences that you can have in life uh, that make you look at the whole picture and think, okay, there's something wrong going on here. It's when you look at yourself in the mirror and, and start that you are aging or there are some uh, illnesses here or some aches or maybe the, the, the success you have tried to achieve in life is not arriving or perhaps you achieved it and it's failing to making you happy and the short duration of life creates a sense of urgency like what, what, what am I doing wrong what's going on and people cope with this in different ways one is to double down on the effort and say it's all about success, it's all about power and money and whatever I was trying to do, I just keep doing it even more. The other coping mechanism is to attack the threat. So you're starting to feel unfit and you basically go to the gym and try to cope with the situation there. And that is also a self-defeating strategy in the sense that eventually your body is going to give in. And so you cannot seek happiness in that. And then there is another coping mechanism, which is to give up on the world and to basically just focus on your little garden and try to tend your little garden, have some harmless hobbies and forget about the bigger challenges in the world. And another coping mechanism is religions, uh, which are basically narratives to soothe uh, yourself and to make you feel like you're, you're in a world that has a bigger meaning. 
And religions too are problematic, or at least the religions that have been created until now because they run out of steam after a while and they became less and less believable over time. So now, what is the solution? If you want to know the solution, then stay tuned. I will continue this narration in the next video tomorrow. Make sure that you subscribe and you click the bell so that you get a notification when the next video is out. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow.